Well, Donald Trump has fired up the troops at a campaign rally in Florida. Not even a humid summer evening could stop the thousands from attending, many wearing T-shirts with his mugshot on it. Now, you'll recall this golf handicap exchange during the presidential debate. Can't hit a ball 50 yards. He challenged me to a golf match. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The reason I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. Uh, and but by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? That's the biggest lie that he's a six handicap of all. I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight. Never. But I had, you know, I mean, how, I've what, seen right? you swing. I know you swing. Let's not act like children. President Trump, we're going to Let's not act like children. You are Well, Donald Trump says it's on challenging Joe Biden to an 18-hole golf match. I'm also officially challenging Crooked Joe to an 18-hole golf match right here. <laughs> On Doral's Blue Monster, considered one of the greatest tournament golf courses anywhere in the world, one of the great courses of the world. It will be among the most watched sporting events in history, maybe bigger than the Ryder Cup or even the Masters. And I will even give Joe Biden 10 strokes aside, 10 strokes, that's a lot. That means 20 strokes in case you don't play golf. Joining me is Webster University Assistant Professor Ralph Scholhammer. Ralph, thank you for joining us. Donald Trump says if he loses, he will donate $1 million to a charity of Joe Biden's choice. Now, I'm not so sure Joe Biden would even be able to stand up long enough to make it to the first hole. So I don't know about you, but I would pay money to watch the president try and swing a golf club. Well, thanks, Danica. It's great to be on with you. Uh, well, I guess I would pay money too, but I remember I think last summer we all saw Joe Biden uh, trying to ride a bike and that didn't go particularly well. So at, at some point, this is just elder abuse. So uh, it's, it's some fun trolling by Donald Trump. But uh, if you look at the condition Joe Biden uh, is in, right, you know, if, if stairs are your mortal enemy uh, and bikes as well, maybe golf is no longer really your sport. No, I think you've absolutely raised a good point there, definitely, Ralph. Now, look, let's talk about the situation in France where, of course, riots and violence have erupted after the far left defeated the far right in an election shock. Ralph, what have the French actually voted for here? Well, defeated is a tricky term. Now, you're correct when it comes to parliamentary seats that have been defeated. But if you look at the popular vote, the, uh, the national rally actually increased significantly. They got about 10 million, whereas Macron's quote-unquote centrist party, because he's no longer a centrist. If you ally with the Islamists and the communists, I'm sorry, you're not a centrist. But he got about 6 million. And the, uh, the, the new popular front, which is this alliance of kind of traditional left-wingers like the socialists and the greens, but also more radical elements like the communists, like Trotskists and open Hamas and Islamist sympathizers, they also got around 6 million. So kind of the, the, the national rally won the popular vote, but due to the election system in France, there was kind of tactical alliance between the quote-unquote center and the, the radical left. So they got more seats. But so the trend towards the right in Europe is continuing. I mean, we saw the same, by the way, in the United Kingdom. As many of your viewers are familiar with Nigel Farage, right? Nigel Farage got 14% of the popular vote, but it only translated into five seats. Whereas the Lib Dems, for example, only got 12% of the vote and they got 72 seats in parliament. So there is a mismatch at them. I mean, we always have to deal with the voting system there is. But there is a mismatch at the moment, I think, kind of where the popular movement is, where the populists are and where the population is, and how it translates into actual political power. But this was not the breaking of the conservative or whatever you want to call it, or the right wing wave that is building in Europe. I would say this is more a calm before the storm because the trend lines are still there.